pigmentation and scars. Vitamin B is very good because it improves the skin barrier and there has been plenty of studies that showed its effectiveness that shows its effectiveness. Vitamin C produces a bleaching effect. It um, can be used for skin lightening and collagen production. Then there is obviously a plethora. It's a lot of lightening agents in the market like hydroquinone, retinoids, uh, azelaic acid, arbutin, kojic acid, etc. There is sunscreens which are very important. Um, there's there's all kinds of, um, there's physical and chemical types of filters in the sunscreens. They um, help protect the skin from the uh, radiation, from the UV radiation, both from UVA and UVB. So this is not even one-tenth of the products that we see, that I see in my clinic. So you can imagine the market out there. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thanks for a wonderful presentation, beautiful presentation. I request uh, Satya Brahma to give the memento. Highlight of the today's program is Dr. Mukesh Hariwala's actually keynote address. So we request all the people to come inside. Heart is a symbol of hard work, 72 beats per minute from birth to the death. Non-stop working, a greatest machine on this planet. Heart means dil, so many Hindi movies, Hindi songs on dil, emotions at its best. And pharma leaders invite Dr. Mukesh Hariwala, the heart care taker and health care economist. Hardware Medical School Affiliated Hospitals, Boston, USA, to sing a keynote speech on Are We Ready for a Mechanical Artificial Heart for Indian Patients? Dr. Mukesh Hariwala. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you, Chairman Satya Brahma, for this very kind and uh, generous opportunity for me to address uh, pharma leaders uh, over here. And uh, I have a dual track career at this moment. Uh, and not only am I a cardiac surgeon, but I'm also a healthcare economist. I have done a vertical split in my career, so I'm going to do the same in my keynote lecture. I'm going to share a little bit of cardiac surgery. I'm involved in cutting edge technologies, uh, right from artificial heart to cellular technologies, which will be a big eye opener to all the pharma leaders over here. I can guarantee you of one thing, is that one of you will be the next millionaire. Keep an eye, I'm not going to point my laser where the money is, but if you're smart enough, you will be the next millionaire. Trust me, wherever I speak, this is probably one of the smallest arena that I'm speaking to. I'm used to speaking in stadiums. I'm speaking in China at the Olympic arena. 20,000 Chinese are looking forward to my lecture on the 12th of October. But even in a small arena, please be assured of the fact I will not dilute my lecture. I'm equally comfortable if there is only one person in an auditorium because I do know that that one person has sacrificed his professional time to listen to me okay so let me these are just some of the disclosures I'm a brand ambassador for billion dollar American companies and European companies but be assured of the fact there is no dilution or any integrity or any adulteration in the scientific content of this lecture I will make sure that the transparency is maintained and wherever I speak in the world it is very important to me that I acknowledge my teachers. I am not a self-made man. 
many there are a lot of media articles talking about superstardom my celebrity patients and all but the fact remains that my career journey has been helped by many people to top it all mentorship and teachership is primary for anybody's success i am fortunate enough to have amongst us probably the father figure for any indian cardiac surgeon whether he practices in india or practices anywhere in the world sir dr parulkar thank you sir for coming and then of course my training involved as you can see these are all dynamic cardiac surgeons in the whole world these are recognizable faces all over the globe my but of course my favorite teacher is doc, the late dr neetu manke dr bhattacharya these are all iconic people from harvard whose name you hear all over the world dr eugene bronwar professor selki my uh, mentor professor isner dr sains from canada who came over to united states and of course during my phase in england for 5 years i was trained by the fastest surgeon in the world that is this gentleman dr john wright someone who can operate with two hands i had difficulty coping up with him fastest surgeon in the world is dr john wright and of course my other transplant boss sir magdi yakub the only heart surgeon in the whole world who has been knighted by the queen of england he is not called doctor anymore he is not called professor anymore he is called sir magdi yakub but when i am speaking of sir magdi yakub let me give you a little interesting anecdote over here we were both sitting in italy i was giving the lecture professor came to listen to my lecture and after the lecture we were having coffee when indian cardiac surgeon from australia was passing by he did not know who professor magdi yakub was so he started addressing me as sir haryawala i really enjoyed your lecture and i told him get out get out but he wouldn't listen he was so impressed with my lecture he kept on calling me sir finally when that young surgeon from sydney went away professor magdi yakub my old boss asked me so mukesh when did the queen knight you in which year and i told you know professor we indians we don't have much patience if the queen is busy we knight ourselves <laughs> so let me give you a little presentation overview of what my journey in the next 45 minutes is going to be i'm of course going to talk a little bit about what the current status is what is heart surgery being treated as how are your coronaries being affected and who are the people who are giving you this therapy very quickly i will jump on into the future which is where my association is all cutting edge not only cutting edge but bleeding edge technologies i'm also carrying the artificial heart with me which i will share with you and then of course for the pharma industry that is where i will show to pointers here are billions of dollars i will scale my as a healthcare economist who wrote a thesis on healthcare in india i will zoom in into india and i will show a 100 billion dollar opportunity it will be up to your intellectual acumen to catch that 100 billion dollar where is this 100 billion dollar don't talk to me at the bar i'm not going to answer that question okay this is just some current modalities of heart disease these are coronary angiograms done by your routine cardiologist this is the artery that is narrowing and of course cardiologists are putting balloons calling it angioplasty they are putting stents to keep it open whether it is drug eluding stent or bare metal stent doesn't matter and of course surgeons like me dr bhattacharya and all of us all over the world we do this simple operation it is called bypass surgery all of these modalities are not treating the heart disease we are only providing palliation for relief of symptoms we are not treating the native disease so don't be fooled by any cardiac surgeon who tells you i cured your heart disease no cardiac surgeon is curing heart disease they are simply providing palliation of your symptoms but what about the patients who go into end stage heart failure disease end stage heart failure disease have dilated hearts constricted hearts and several when i got trained in transplantation i didn't think it was a difficult operation heart transplant is probably one of the easiest operation a cardiac surgeon does i think difficult operations are done by pediatric and neonatal cardiac surgeons 
I do not do any of that. But let me just show you what a transplant is all about. Transplant basically is explantation of a heart from a donor, a vehicular accident donor who is cerebrally dead, rest of the organs have sunk, but the heart is intact. That becomes a heart donor. This is transfer of the heart, just moving from one donor to the recipient over here, implantation of a heart. A very easy operation can be done in about 90 to 120 minutes. But I am now the brand ambassador of probably the most expensive heart operation being done in the world. It is placement of a mechanical artificial heart. You, you leave the native heart intact, but a mechanical artificial heart. This is the heartbeat too, right over here. I carried it for your benefit right over here. As you can see, the native heart is in place. This is the brain. This is the artificial heart. On the shelf price of this in the United States is 100,000 US dollars, equal to about 50 lakhs minus the minor surgical cost of a cardiac surgeon. We don't charge a lot of money. So anyway, so this part goes over here into the left ventricular apex. This is the brain where there are titanium magnets that are moving around. This is the connection to the ascending aorta which will pump. Heart's only function in life is to pump blood. Nothing else. Bollywood people may say, my heart sank, my heart broke. My friend Rajesh Khanna used to always ask me, you know, he uh, recently must have read media articles where Rajesh Khanna, because I operated on music director R.D. Burman, Rajesh Khanna asked me, he says, doctor, is there a technology out there that can heal emotionally broken hearts? I told Rajesh Khanna, if we came up with your, that technology, people will stop watching your movies. <laughs> that is why we have not come up with this, okay? So this device is battery operated. Patient can walk around for about 12, 12 hours on this battery. I'm going to show you a patient of mine right over here. Look at this patient. This is a patient who is a cardiomyopathy patient, 28 years old. Watch this video over here. This is a patient with a mechanical artificial heart in her body. Look at her, she's cycling in the hospital gym over here. Here she is with the instructor in the gym. You can see she's doing rowing exercises. But more, look at, she's ambulating in the hospital gym. She has no heart in her chest, remember. She has this, a mechanical artificial heart. But look at her exercise performance and endurance going up. Now she's getting ready to box with her gym. She's boxing and she has no heart in her chest. Look at the physical performance. She has dropped two classes from class four. Somebody who was bedridden only on oral maximal medication. Now she's boxing in the gym. So this is the future of an artificial heart. Very high endurance and the performance is absolutely stunning. But in America, when I got invited from London, I had one thing. I graduated at a very young age from cardiac surgery. By age 34, I was already a cardiac surgeon. My bosses, Professor Magdi Yaku, John Wright and Earl told me, don't go to India. Nobody will send, send you patients. You don't even have gray hair. So I said, all right. So what should I do? He said, go to America. I said, America? And do what? Do surgery? They said, no, 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 no. Do something in life that will change the life of every heart disease patient in the world. They wanted me to do something so dynamic, but I asked, what is it? They didn't know the answer. I attended lectures in America. Here is Professor Judith Falkman, but before I go to Judith Falkman, his idea originally comes from KM Hospital, where Dr. Barulkar was dean. Dr. Barulkar used to work with a surgeon, a dynamic surgeon called Dr. P.K. Sen. Remember, angiogenesis is going to be the future of all sciences in the world. Pharma leaders must understand what is angiogenesis. The original brainchild of angiogenesis is not Dr. Falkman, not Dr. Mukesh Ariyal, it is Dr. P.K. Sen. What he did, he just took plain needles and started puncturing the heart. He created what is called as a snake operation and creating blood vessels, unfortunately, KM doesn't have a lot of money. KM cannot pursue research what I can do. Therefore, I started attending lectures of Dr. Judith Falkman, 
But when Dr. Faulkman was speaking in America, although we both are from Boston, I asked a question in Chicago. Dr. Faulkman was speaking using the word consistently angiogenesis. Now, Dr. Faulkman is a pediatric oncosurgeon, which means he does cancer surgery. He has been talking about shutting off tumors for, to stop the blood supply. I raised my hand and I said, Sir, can I ask a stupid question? I was only 34 years old, but I had the guts. He says, yes, doctor, no question in science is a stupid question. Go ahead. I asked the question, Dr. Faulkman, you are giving lectures all over the world in line for Nobel Prize, but you are using the term angiogenesis. I think you should use the word anti-angiogenesis because you are shutting off blood supply. He liked my question. He called me to his office. The next day, I became a millionaire. I was offered a million dollars. He liked my idea. He says, you do angiogenesis of the heart and here is a million dollars. Suddenly, I had a million dollars to play with. I only just had a wild idea, but I didn't know what to do. So that came from Dr. Judith Faulkman. Like all surgeons, we start experiments on dogs. This slide is not a slide about my success. This slide is a slide about my failure. Do remember the next generation, the most important part of success is your failure, especially when it comes to science. If you do not fail in science, in research, you can never be successful. It means you knew all the answers. Anyway, I started blocking all the coronary arteries of the dogs. Look at this, I'm blocking this, I'm sitting over here taking this picture. And this dog, I've ligated all the arteries, but the dog is running on full speed on the treadmill. Nothing is happening to the dog's heart. I'm trying to give a heart attack to this dog because my protocol is to simulate human coronary artery disease. How people are getting artery disease, how the artery is blocking, but I'm failing over here. I'm failing so badly that the CEO of my hospital called me Doctor, you have already spent one million dollars. Very soon, you are going to lose your job. But, I said, not to worry. My pursuit of success is far more powerful than my fear for failure. I told him that. He told me, you seem to be speaking good English. I will give you one, one more million. You go ahead with your experiments. I said, thank you very much, sir. But I was supported by all the surgeons. Remember, there are 80 cardiac surgeons in Boston, eight best hospitals of the world. None of them are saying I'm failing, but my experiment is failing because I'm not able to reproduce heart disease of human beings. Why I'm showing you this picture? I could consult with every possible surgeon and scientist in the world, but none of them are answering my question. I'm trying to change failure into success. But I'm a very patient listener. I listen to everybody you live, whatever they say. I had a farmer's son who was working with me as a volunteer. He whispered something in my ear one morning. He knew I was like a caged tiger trying to do something very dynamic. He just whispered. What he whispered was music to my ears. His name is Jeff Horowitz. Remember, a farmer's son who is only a volunteer. I'm surrounded by cardiologists, cardiac surgeons. I'm listening to a volunteer. I took the cue upon it. He says, he told me, Dr. Mukesh, in the farm, I've heard pigs are like human beings. He heard this from veterinary doctors. Pigs are like human beings. I says, what? Let's go to the farm. I drive, fortunately, a good car in America. I took it straight to the farm. I'm not even worried about getting puncture or anything. I straight, this is what I found. And look here, this is what changed the face of the world for coronary artery disease. This is a pig. This is a human being. Look at the coronary artery of a pig. Can you tell which is the different one? You cannot tell which is pig and which is you. human being. They are identical. Now I said, now I know what to do. Surgery is not difficult for me, but I think I'm going to create the model. The protocol to do such an experiment, how you can aspirate from the iliac crest of the bone. Some people are even aspirating from fat and other places. These are the major differences. Remember, in stem cell technology, there are many new words that are coming into the medical dictionary. One of the most important word is this, pluripotent. 
What is pluripotency? Pluripotency is a new term where stem cells have the flexibility. That is what I was calling about designer stem cells. You can design a stem cell. Adult stem cells, none of that is available. But there is a very high risk of teratoma. You can get tumors. If I do a bad experiment, I could destroy the human race. That is why we don't want to indulge in, adult, in embryonic stem cells, but instead we will go for the adult stem cells. Here is a clinical case. Directly I am taking you from basic science research. A combination therapy, what I would call as a triple therapy. A marriage of bypass surgery done by cardiac surgeon, stimulation of angiogenesis and injection of stem cells. I am going to show you a 62 year old diabetic patient. This is a typical Indian patient that all of you will be treating or pharma leaders will be involved in interjection to treat this patient. Is Here is a diabetic patient, you can see right coronary artery is blocked. Look at left coronary artery, LED is over here, okay. The circumflex is diffused, surgeon cannot do anything, cardiologist cannot do anything, none of that. That is the territory that now I am going to inject stem cells. Look at these pictures over here for you. Aspiration of stem cells accurately. This is one bypass, very fast graft which I will do in 12 minutes. Under 12 minutes of very fast bypass graft to be done, then injection of stem cells. This is the lasers that I am going to use for stimulation of angiogenesis. There used to be an operation called TMLR. I am not doing TMLR. I am not interested in patent channels. What I am interested in is pulling the trigger to release cytokines. The angiogenesis exactly like the operation that I did in my animal experiments 15 days ago. Here is the clinical case you can see performed in a hybrid OR. A hybrid OR is a new setting that you are going to see all over the country. A combination of a cath lab and an operating room using a lot of technology, software and all of this. You can see over here I have started the operation. Here is the iliac crest that is being measured. A very sharp long needle is being taken just like you are doing a lumbar puncture with a large bore. That large bore is now look drilling. This is like drilling into the bone of the iliac crest over here deep down. One has to go deep down because the stem cells reside in the marrow. They do not reside in the cortex which is the outer part of the bone. That is why you have to go deep down over here and you can see now what I am essentially aspirating is bone marrow. I am not aspirating stem cells. There will be a filtration process that we will have to go through. From that, I will segregate and get the stem cells. Big opportunity for pharma industry is that what are those filters? What is the segregation criteria? But more important, we are going to see stem cell banks just like Bank of Baroda all over India. Big opportunity. It is called economics of tissues. This is what is going to be the future in India is economics of tissue. The operation is going on. It has gone to the lab. This is the fast bypass operation that has been done under 22 minutes on a very fast beating heart. You can see the internal mammary graft. Now with my left hand, I'm retracting the heart and he, I'm doing lasers over here. Lasers is, this is what I'm doing. Powerful lasers. I'm releasing cytokines. Remember, nature has provided VEGF growth factor in the heart. I'm stimulating that. I'm awakening that. That is what is happening over here. Very soon, I'm going to flip the heart over and quickly inject those stem cells, but not in the channel where those lasers are going on, but in the periphery of those channels. In the periphery is where the matrix lies, where the action of stem cells happen. The action happens at the matrix level. Unfortunately, in India, I see so many people injecting stem cells. They have no clue where they are injecting. They are not tagging the stem cell. If they inject 100 cells, they don't know where they went. They just say operation was successful. Here is a scientific basis, what an operation. This is C now. Finally, injection of stem cells right, right over here in the periphery of those laser channels. Okay. Here are the quick results. We have not done many patients. I am a true scientist. I reference all my science that I do over here. It is still in press, still being peer reviewed. But look at the perfusion. These dark dots are on the ventricle where I injected the laser beams. Those laser beams are these, look at this post-injection of stem cell. Complete green, green is perfusion. This is a 100% myocardial reperfusion that has taken place. This patient will never require redo surgery in his entire living life. Because total, look at this ejection fraction over here. 
I'm showing when you combine a triple therapy, which is far superior than just a double therapy. Look at this over here, a photomicrograph of what is happening at the cellular level to this patient, completely fractured. Just like my experiment where I had shown you a fractured matrix. This is that fractured matrix. This is where patients complain in the house. Old people, I'm getting chest pain. I'm becoming breathless. This is what is happening in chest pain, a fractured matrix. They are breathing air, but the blood is not reaching all the tissues at the microcellular level. It is this fracture. Look at this after injection of stem cell. Beautiful, no more fractures in the myocardium. This is like me opening an umbrella when it is raining. Here, by injection of stem cells, I have opened the umbrella. This patient, again, is never going to complain of chest pain. This, again, is done in a hybrid OR. Many fantastic companies make hybrid ORs, and that's a separate lecture by itself. What is the pathway? What exactly really happened behind the scene? Some of you are surgeon scientists or just scientists or pharmacologists. I am a surgeon scientist, not only just another surgeon. This is what is happening. Stem cell injection from here, torching of it by the shockwave, releasing of cytokines over here, which is VEGF and others. This is the pathway, complete restoration of myocardium. This is what is going to be the future. In future, there will be no redo bypass surgery. Redo bypass surgery will be addressed right over here in the triple therapy protocol. This is being approved all over the world. I fly almost every week. I have to go to the airport, some major award, some major arena all over the world where I am speaking. In fact, at the check-in counter in Boston, they think I'm aircraft crew. I so often show up at the airport. So, but this is what is the operation that is going to be of the future. What about poor patients who have already had a heart attack? Are we not going to do something for those patients? We should do something for those patients. That is going to be called cardiac myogenesis. Is infarctic tissue not to be reversed, but by laying a supermatant layer of skeletal muscles. Punch biopsy is taken from muscle, electrically or chemically simulated, and then infarcted patients. So heart attack patients also in future may have hope. That is going to be called myogenesis, is regeneration of muscle and we are in the process of that protocol right now. Let me quickly shift gears and become a healthcare economist. Enough of science. What I did two years ago, I did something very interesting in my career. I took a sabbatical. I says, okay, fine, I have enough name as a cardiac surgeon. I've done enough basic science. Now it has become a clinical reality. But I lacked one thing which many doctors in the future will be doing is understanding the business of healthcare. Most doctors are practicing healthcare, they have no idea about the business of healthcare. Most pharma leaders, many of them over here are CEOs of big multi-million dollar, they still don't know the business of healthcare because they learned it on the job. I didn't want to learn it on the job. I took a sabbatical, I joined business school in America. I joined business school, I once again became a student at the age of 50. I wanted to understand where is the money, what is happening in healthcare, so that I could become a motivator and an educator to future leaders. My business school is the number one business school in America. It does not uh, train you to become an MBA. It trains you to become a world leader. And that has happened in my case. That is what that program is all about. But when you go into Washington, this is part of my thesis. You zoom into the world. Just like immigration patterns historically, there are movement of patients happening all over the world. This is a real life picture, American Medical Association data. Look at patients are now moving all over the world. The world is not round anymore, now it is a flat world. Economist Friedman has said the world is flat. I'm extrapolating his business sense, applying it to healthcare, that the world is flat. Look at the movement of these patients happening. Very interestingly, you will see they are maximum are coming to Asia. That is what is of interest to you. This is where the billion dollar opportunity for India is over here. All of them are over here. Where is India? Somewhere over here is India. India is going to have big competition. I will show you some of that competition. Don't take it lightly. Here is some data. McKinsey and company, they are the financial wizards of the world. They are provide billions of dollars of accounting data. 
what really is happening in the business of healthcare. Look at this projection. In 2004, it was just a $40 billion industry of patients moving worldwide. Forecasting for the future is $100 billion by 2012. Yes, there has been a contraction in the market because of economic trends. Recessions in America having impact all over the world. Contraction in Indian economy and several other places. This forecasted number has declined. There has been an adjustment of number that has to be done. But once again, it will spike. But it is not going down. This opportunity is going to stay. President Barack Obama, our leader, current leader, has a soft heart for poor Americans. Whenever I speak all over the world, people say, Mukesh, really? Is there a term called poor American? Yes. Let me share with you. 15% qualify by American standards as poor Americans. President Barack Obama has a heart for them. He wants to do something for them. The most important thing he can do is provide them health care. So that is where Obama's health care reform now comes into play. That reform, why am I am not trying to give you American economics. What I am trying to tell you is the impact of President Barack Obama on the whole world. That becomes an opportunity for India. That is what I am coming to. But as you can see, even with President Barack Obama's reform, America is a trillion plus dollar industry for healthcare. Look what is happening. The graph is still going up. If the graph is still going up, the ongoing opportunity is going to be there for the outside world, whether reform or no reform. It doesn't really matter. But one of the things that is going to definitely happen by President Barack Obama's reform is socialization of medicine will happen in America. For the first time, America is a capitalistic country. Canada is a socialized country. England is a socialized country. Very soon, America will become a socialized country. This is what the phenomenon that will happen. Long lines will start appearing in America to see the doctor or to go for an operation. Once long, Americans are very impatient. They are not used to this culture of standing in line to see a doctor or wait for bypass surgery or knee replacement. No. This is what they will do. They will jump out of the line, go sideways, catch a plane and find the destination. I am defining the destination, destination India. Anybody who leaves this line, that is again the business opportunity over here. Let me show you rate card over here. These are certified rate cards. Look at the rate card over here. Coronary artery bypass surgery in America for a hospital. My hospital is the number one hospital in America. The Harvard Hospital. This is the rate card. If you come and want to do bypass surgery, out of your pocket, it is $130,000. Look at India's rate card. 10,000. Almost 10%. Even if you apply adjustment for inflation, it will at the most go up to 14,000. It will still be $10,000. Thailand, close competitor is here. And Dubai, very close competitor, is high. The reason Dubai is high, because I train many of the surgeons who are working over there, I go to Dubai very often, is Dubai is a new country. It cannot match this rate card of India. Look at this heart wall replacement, angioplasty, hysterectomy, spinal fusion. These are all opportunities for doctors in India. This is such a fantastic chart that you can see opportunity flashing at you. Let's grab this opportunity, should be the vision of Indian leaders. What is happening in America because of healthcare reform? Insurance companies cover most of America, other than a few. They are having meetings in between them. How should we offer plan B to our patients? They are also thinking, shall we start... I'm sorry to this thing. Just to give you the honor, we arrived. I kept him waiting there at the lounge. I'll have to bring in. For all that Dr. Mukesh Hayawala has spoken, it's going to set a new trend. Can you have a standing ovation for Dr. Mukesh Hayawala, which is revolutionized by the entire industry?
Mr. Prakash Kumar Gua, Managing Director, Zubentis Healthcare Limited. And the Dynamic Entrepreneur of the Year 2012 goes to Dr. Rajaram Saman. <laughs> of the year 2012. Can we have the nominees please? Pharma OTC Company of the Year 2012. The nominees are UTH Healthcare Limited, Elder Pharmaceuticals Limited, Abbott India Limited, Brand Baxi Limited, OTC Company of the Year 2012 goes to Rambaxi Limited. Hearty congratulations to the entire team of Rambaxi Limited. Can we have the nomination, please? India's most admired nutrition and nutraceutical company of the year 2012. The nominees are Rand Baxi Limited, Abbott India Limited, Elder Pharmaceuticals Limited, UTH Healthcare Limited. India's most admired nutrition and nutraceuticals of the year 2012 goes to Elder Pharmaceuticals Limited. Party congratulations to the entire team. Can we have the nominees, please? Pharma Company of the Year 2012. The nominees are Ford Gestra Private Limited, Ford's India Laboratories Private Limited, Fresenius Carby Oncology Limited, Blue Cross Limited. And the Company of the Year 2012 goes to Ports India Laboratories Private Limited. Hearty congratulations to you. of the year 2012 and can we have the nominees please Pharma CSR organization of the year 2012 the nominees are Micro Labs Limited
Cadillac Pharmaceuticals Limited, Sipla Limited, Lupin Limited. Okay, and uh, the winner out here is none other than Micro Labs Limited. Once again, hearty congratulations to the entire team. Pharma CSR Organization of the Year 2012. Micro Labs Limited. Congratulations to the entire team. We move on to the Pharma Professional of the Decade 2012. Can we have the nominees, please? Pharma Professional of the Decade 2012. Note, there is no voting for this category. The nominees are Mr. Ashok Jain, Executive Director of Micro Labs Limited. Dr. Hasid Joshipura, Vice President, South Asia, and Managing Director, India, GlaxoSmithKline Pharmaceuticals Limited. Mr. Arun Sane, Managing Director, Rand Baxi Limited. Dr. Alok Mishra, Managing Director, Advaita Pharma Private Limited. Yes, each and every one of the delegates is winning the award, so I'll call out the delegates' name individually. Mr. Ashok Jain, Executive Director of Microlabs Limited. Vice President, South Asia and Managing Director, India, GlaxoSmithKline Pharmaceuticals Limited. Dr. Harshit is not out here. We move on to the next gentleman, Mr. Arun Sani, MD of Ranbaxi Limited. Once again, hearty congratulations to you. Dr. Alok Mishra, Advaita Farmer, Pirate Limited. <laughs> Hearty congratulations to all the awardees out here. We move on to the next category of award, Lifetime Achievement Award of 2012. Can we have the nominees, please? Lifetime Achievement Award 2012. The nominees are Mr. Deepak Pahwa, Chairman, Pahwa Enterprises. Mr. N. R. Munja, Chairman, In Swift Limited. Mr. Kashi Vishwanath, Chairman. Anjanea Life Care Limited. Once again, each and every delegate out here is entitled to winning the Lifetime Achievement Award. So we call out each of them individually. Mr. Deepak Power, Chairman of Power Enterprises. Hearty congratulations to you. to Mr. N.R. Munja, Chairman of In Swift Limited. Hearty congratulations to you. Chairman of Anjan 
Tanzania Life Care Limited. Hearty congratulations to him. Once again, can you please welcome our audience with a huge round of applause. We move on to the brand of the year 2012 and can we have the nominees please? Brand of the year 2012 The nominees are Revital Bovara Shelka Corex And the brand of the year 2012 goes to Revital. Hearty congratulations to the entire team of Revital. Year 2012. Can we have the nominees, please? Innovative R&D Company of the Year 2012. The nominees are Micro Labs Limited, Sipla Limited, Ranbaxi Limited, Glenmark Limited. R&D Company of the Year 2012 goes to Microlabs Limited. Once again, hearty congratulations to the entire team of Microlabs Limited. Surgeon of the Year 2012. There was no voting involved. Let's see whom we have out here. Can we have the AD please? India's Most Admired Surgeon of the Year 2012. And the award goes to Dr. Mukesh Haryava, Cardiac Surgeon and Healthcare Partner. Once again, hearty congratulations to Dr. Mukesh Haryawala. Huge round for Prosperin. Can we have the nominees, please? India's fastest growing pharmacy retail chain 2012. The nominees are Nogo Medicals, Med Plus, Apollo Pharmacy, Trust Chemists and Druggists. India's fastest growing pharmacy retail chain 2012 and the winner is Trust Chemist and Druggist. Huge round of applause. Please. 
India's most promising entrant into the big league. The nominees are Mankind Pharma Limited, Ind Swift Limited, TSM Nutritional Products India Private Limited, Family First Pharmaceuticals Incorporated. India's most promising entrant into the big league goes to Ind Swift Limited. Hearty congratulations to the entire team and please welcome them with a huge round of applause. Emerging Company of the Year 2012. Can we have the nominees, please? Emerging Company of the Year 2012. The nominees are Indkemi Health Specialties Private Limited, Fresenius Kirby Oncology Limited, Teva India Private Limited, Acumentus Healthcare Limited. The Emerging Company of the Year 2012 goes to Acumentus Healthcare Limited. Quite a huge fan following our team. Once again, hearty congratulations to Acumentus Healthcare for being the Emerging Company of the Year 2012. Congratulations. We move on to India's most admired company in bulk drugs 2012. Can we have the nominations, please? India's most admired company in bulk drugs 2012. The nominees are Natco Pharma Limited, Granules India Limited, Parabolic Drugs Limited. Or Window Pharma Limited. India's most admired company in bulk drugs 2012 goes to Granules India Limited. Once again, hearty congratulations to the entire team. India's most admired promising hospital chain 2012. The nominees are Columbia Hospitals, Global Hospitals, Nova Medical Centers, Reach Candy Hospital. India's most admired promising hospital chain 2012 goes to Global Hospitals. nominations please upcoming biotech pharma company of the year 2012 the nominees are adroid biomed limited citp biotech india private limited sj herbals and healthcare 
Rema's Biotech. And the upcoming Biotech Palmer Company of the Year 2012 goes to Android Biomed Limited. Once again, hearty congratulations to the team. award and that goes for the best BSC award for the best return to the investors. Can we have the nominations please? BSE award for the best return to investors. The nominees are Ajanta Pharma Limited, TTK Healthcare Limited, Davis Laboratories Limited, Anjanea Life Care Limited, BSC award for best return to the investors goes to Anjania Life Care Limited. Once again, hearty congratulations to the entire team and once again a huge round of applause please. We move on to the next award, India's Most Promising Cosmetologist and Non-Surgical Aesthetic Medicine Award. We have no voting out yet, so let's disclose who the winner is. Can we have the AD please? India's Most Promising Cosmetologist and Non-Surgical Aesthetic Medicine Award. And the award goes to Dr. Rashmi Shetty, CEO, Raw Skin and Aesthetic. Once again, a huge round of applause for Dr. Rashmi Shetty, CEO of Raskin and Aesthetics. We move on to another award. The Women Entrepreneur of the Year. Can we have the nominations, please? Woman Entrepreneur of the Year. The nominees are Mrs. Uma R. Zaveri, Managing Director, S. Zaveri Pharmacem Private Limited. Dr. Shubha Dharmana, Founder CEO, Dr. Shubha Skin and Laser Clinic. Dr. Anjali Mukherjee, Co-Founder, Health Total. Ms. Shalini Kumar Saxena, Elder Instruments. We have two ladies who will be jointly sharing the award for the Women Entrepreneur of the Year. One of the ladies is Dr. Shubha Dharmana, Founder CEO of Dr. Shubha Skin and uh, Laser Clinic. Huge round of applause for you. Congratulations once again. We move on to the next award. India's most promising outsourcing pharma company in Krams. Can we have the nominations please? India's most promising outsourcing pharma company in Krams. The nominees are Accum's Drugs and Pharmaceuticals Limited, Rusan Pharma Limited, Anko Drugs Limited, Newland Laboratories Limited. 
India's most promising outsourcing pharma company, Intrams, goes to Acumes Drugs and Pharmaceuticals Limited. Hearty congratulations to the entire team. Entrepreneur of the Year 2012. The award goes to Mr. JPN Singh, Director, Galfa Laboratories Limited. Once again, hearty congratulations to Mr. JPN Singh, Director of Galfa Laboratories Limited. Shetty, Chairman, NMC Healthcare. 